Good morning and welcome. Can you guys hear me, everyone? Yes, yes. Yep, okay. we're good. Yes, so we're good. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, this is New Gambia Platform. We are back here with our bi-weekly show, which we were changing it to weekly. So in the next uh, two weeks, by May, I think May 17, yes. By May 17, we're going to change the show to a weekly show. Um, it will be 11 a.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Uh, GMT time. So we are letting all our viewers to keep note of uh, that day on the 17th of May. Uh, so welcome, guys. Um, today we're going to be discussing about China and Africa deals. What is going on? What are Chinese people up to? And uh, what we, the Africans, should be looking to do to make sure that you know we don't fall for China's trap. So we're gonna look into the financial agenda China has, the military agenda, and all the agendas China is preparing uh, and you know their their plans to take over Africa, and not only Africa, but in, in a black uh, black occupied territory. I can say it. they just want to take over the world. So we as Africans, we we came too far. So we're gonna be talking about that. Another thing that we're gonna be talking about is COVID nineteen. Uh, what are the you know the lockdown plans ahead? and how we can keep ourselves you know, protected. So to start the program, I will go ahead and um, have the, my, uh, the participants, my, my panelists introduce themselves. And then we're gonna start with, uh, with China and African deals. Welcome guys. Thank you. Well, my name is Sam Cisse. Um, and uh, I am very happy to be part of this. Um, you know, as I always uh, talk about, uh, the development of our country is very crucial, very important to us. So um, this is very important for all of us to come together and come up with uh, solutions to our problems in Gambia. So um, definitely Chinese, Chinese people trying to occupy Africa is a major thing and uh, we really need to come up with things that we can talk about. So I'll let Balde go, Balde introduce himself. Thank you very much, um, Mamadou Sawane, the host of this New Gambia platform and Sam Sisi, um, my um, co-panelist on this program. I'm Ibrahim Abalde, um, but as usual, it's, um, I'm pleased to um, be on this important platform to talk about very important issues such as um, how China is trying to emerge as the new colonial um, I mean, master of the continent. Thank you. All right, so thank you guys. Um, first, we're gonna look at, you know, some of the challenges that I know we are facing, specifically economic challenges. And I think China in the past 20 years, you know, 20 years ago, China was not where it is today. It was one of con considered in the 19, um, I believe in the 1980s or 70s, very poor country, just like a third world country. So China has, has done so many things to come to where they are today. I think we should all you know, learn from, from them and Africa as a continent should look into what they can do to sustain, you know, Africa to sustain itself instead of falling in for the cheap, cheap financial traps, you know, trying to get things in a cheaper way while not looking into the consequences of the decisions that they're making. So I will, first of all, you know, cause I have a lot, but I would um, have you guys to uh, look into some of these things and then let's discuss in detail, what are the challenges that we face with China 
and also what are the preparation that Africans can do? Because if not, right now, you know, it is showing that definitely in the next couple of years, we will be, you know, like, uh, would be dominated by the Chinese. And then that is not gonna sit well with the gen next generation. And then it's not, not gonna sit well with our future. All right, so who's coming next? Um, Sam, I'll let Valde go. <laughs> Valde, you can go. Yes. Go ahead, Sam. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, um, thank you very much, um, Samani. Um, I think China's um, um, grip on the continent is a cause for concern. Um, I'm so, to put things into perspective, the recent events in China uh, with regard to this uh, COVID-19 um, uh, kind of spark a revolt. You know, uh, this has not been um, an easy affair within um, the African diaspora and also Africans who, who are staying um, back home, you know, in their respective countries. Uh, we've seen that uh, there has been a kind of um, uh, a pressure on the Chinese government um, by mainly Africans who are very concerned about the way our people have been treated there. And unfortunately, um, there is a, usually a, an adage which says that someone who gives you or feeds you so much, he controls you, you know, and it will be difficult to really be independent um, when an organization or an institution or a country um, gives so much. That's why the, um, there's often another um, witty saying which says that do not accept free lunch because um, usually um, it comes with trappings, you know, that uh, kind of underpin the relationship. So uh, it's sad to say um, if we have to be independent uh, of ourselves as, as, as a continent or Africa, we really cannot wash off ourselves from China because um, their investments are often disguised in the form of um, bilateral relationship or um, aid you know, in the name of development. And this is something that is a sad reality facing our continent. Um, so much so that our governments are not kind kind of condemning the despicable acts that the Chinese government are doing because of the investment that they are making in, in, in our various countries. For instance, if the Chinese were to pull out of Gambia, uh, there'll, there'll be a drastic drawback on the economy because um, some of the industry they are uh, engaged in are employing a lot of people. And not forgetting also about the brown envelopes or, 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 or the um, subtle diplomacy, you know, with regard to the briefcase, you know. So we all know these things, um, the Chinese are very good at it and it, it will be difficult for one to really investigate and get to the bottom of the matter, you know, with regard to how China is really infiltrating the continent and how our people who are um, presently in China have been treated, you know, and ostracized. So this is where I will stop for the time being. I uh, hope um, that Sam and you, someone will talk of the issues um, further. All right. So Sam, um, that's a very good contribution from Balde there. Absolutely, yes. Yes, Balde, thank you for all that, for that insight there. Yeah, very, very okay, good I have, I have Mfamara coming in now. So good. let's welcome Mfamara. I right, go ahead, um, Sam. Uh, while you, um, Pamela, pitching. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Like... <laughs> Welcome, sir, Pamela. I don't think he can hear us. Okay. okay go ahead, but uh, go ahead, um, Sam. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, uh, first I'd like to uh, thank Balde for uh, for what he said. You know, very very important points and. Uh, we have to look at China as, you know, just like how it is now, everybody anywhere, everybody's saying Chinese are trying to take over Africa. Well, um, we, we can only control what we can control by talking about Gambia. We can talk about all, all, the whole of Africa, but right now it's the Gambians that are listening to us and we need to talk and address our own situation. Um, and if you look at it, 
it is true that Chinese are trying to dominate Africa. They're trying to, they're pumping a lot of money uh, into our country um, to, be able, to be able to have access into things that they are interested in and taking our resources back to China and leaving us empty handed. That's what they're doing. But not only that, they're also creating some environmental damages in our society. Yes. Uh, so that is uh, very, very important to, to talk about. And it all starts with the leadership from the president. The president has to put his foot down and um, uh, make sure that uh, certain things that need to be in place uh, tighten our, uh, um, uh, our budget first so that we can live within our budget and not have to borrow money from China. It's very important. If we make a budget, we need to try to balance that budget. Get as close as possible so that you don't need to go and get money from somewhere. And the best way to do that, a couple of things to do is, um, uh, one, we need to fight corruption in our, in our own country. If we can't fight corruption and, and retain all the resources that we have and all the revenue that our country generates, if we can't fight that and hold on to that, it'll be very difficult to go without China. And, and, and China is not the only country. We can go to other places. We can go to the competitors, China's competitors, uh, if we have to take a loan. But when we take a loan, we need to make sure every dime of that loan get used the way it's supposed to be, the way it's intended for. Um, so balancing budget is one thing taking loans and use the loans for the intended purpose um, is, is, is another thing. But the most important thing is from the president coming all the way down to all of his ministers, anything we do with China, we need to have people in Gambia that have great negotiation skills that can sit down and chat with China and whatever China wants, we negotiate to make sure it's in the best interest, interest of Gambia. If not, we walk away. We say, no, but thank you. We don't need that. We don't want that. We need to be able to say no to China so that we don't allow them into our country to come and do things in there. And another thing is leasing versus buying. We, we really need to think about our resources and our properties, our lands, and lease it to them so that we can end up taking back ownership rather than selling it to them. Anything you sell to them is there. They're gonna keep it, they're gonna occupy, they're gonna try to expand. If we lease it with the term limits, four years, five years, at the end of that, you're out of here. We don't renew the contract. But also, other things that I look at is, that's why it's very important to have people that can really negotiate with China. Um, in the negotiation table, before any contract, Gambia should be the one, if Chinese come to Gambia and say, we wanna do this, Gambia should say, okay, well, we're gonna tell us what your plans are. Then Gambia look at those plans and say, we're the ones that are gonna make the contract. We're gonna make the contract. We will write the contract and on the contract, this is how, these are the terms and conditions of the contract. One, we are only going to limit it to five years, three, three to five years, anywhere. I'm just giving a, a suggestion. Limit it to a certain time. We are only going to limit it to five years, for example. And as part of that contract, we are also going to require that you hire Gambians. 90% of your employees should be Gambians. Negotiate. Start from 90% because whatever they're going to do, they're going to have to bring their own experts. Experts are people that you cannot replace. Experts are people that you cannot just pick in Gambia and say they had this company. So Chinese will bring their own experts to start something, but then Gambians should be the majority of the employees. Because I know in some places, Chinese go build factories and build stuff and they bring their own people. They don't employ people from that. They employ some people, but not a large number of people. So we need to make sure that it's in the best interests of Gambia. For example, one, uh, one thing I talked about last year was the, the fisheries department. When Chinese came to Gambia and, and tried to fish in our country, we let them fish there. What should have been negotiated was this fishing, we're gonna sign a contract with you for five years. And during that five years, in, as part of that contract, we're gonna, we need you to send, we need to send 
five Gambians, I'm just giving a, picking a number, five Gambians, it could be seven, it could be 10, but five Gambians that will be sent to your country to go learn this uh, fishing project and how to operate fishing trawl trawlers and how to maintain them also, perform preventive maintenance on them. That way, when the contract ends, those people are back in our country to take over because we're gonna give them a term limit. At the end of that term, they're gonna leave. If they don't agree to that contract, we say, we walk away. We don't wanna do it because we're not gonna do it. We shouldn't do something that's gonna end up Chinese taking over. That's what we need to keep in the back of our minds. Do not allow anything that will let Chinese take over permanently. We give them short-term leases. And at the end of that, at that point, Gambians should be ready to take over and run that fishing, troll, uh, fishing uh, business for Gambia. Gambia could be making uh, fishing and getting all those fish and sending it to China and selling it to them for our own revenue. Instead of Chinese coming to fish and take the fish back to their countries, right. the ones that they don't want, they destroy them and put them and leave them all over the place. That's terrible. That's a violation of environmental compliance. And, and the third part, I'm gonna make it, <laughs> try to keep it here. The third part is Gambia government need to make sure that just like in America here, you have EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Our Environmental Protection Agency need to be the toughest agency in Gambia to make sure all these foreign countries that come in here to invest in our country, to follow our rules and regulations. If they go, if, if, if you go to the seaside, you go to Sanyang or Gunjuru or, 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 or Brufut area, uh, Tanje area, you see a lot of dead fish all over the place. The Environmental Compliance Agency should have been inspecting these people and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out, time out. You guys are violating our environment. You are violating the, co the contract. So as of right now, immediately stop. No operations. You got to clean this up before we can let you do. Give them warnings first time. After the warning, next time you go there, give them hefty fines, just like in America. You know, Chinese are not going to do that in America. They know they're not that stupid. They're not going to do right, that. No, no, they, they're not going to do that. They, they, they're not going to do that here. Yeah, Americans will let them do that. Yeah. So we should not let them do it because some environmental violations in America could be up to fifty thousand dollars per day per violation. Violation. Yes, yes, yes. If you I think about that, that, if we put such things in place for Chinese people in Gambia, we will be collecting a lot of money from them, or they're going to clean up. And at the end of that contract, we say, you know what? We're not renewing that contract. Here you go. Take off and leave. We're going to run it ourselves. So I'll stop here. Thank That's you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pa, for, um, for Sam, for, for coming up with that um, additional, you know, uh, ideas that, um, so now we can just move on to my friend here, Mfamara. Mfamara just joined us. Mr. Dravi, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, Mr. Sawane. How are you today? <laughs> Good. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. All right. So, yes, uh, yes. yeah, yeah you, thank you, you so much. Sunday yeah. is always. Uh, no, I know you're at work, but having just to make an effort to to be part yeah. of this is really, really appreciative. I mean, um, we can thank you enough, definitely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. So you can go ahead. Thank you, um, Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the topic we are talking about. The, we, the, that's the Chinese, um, and then their 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 ambition to to take over Africa. And then yeah. what, what it means to us and the challenges we face and what can we do. Yeah. Um, I think Balde and, uh, um, and Sam gave, they gave a wonderful, um, you know, thoughts on that. So if you can also oh. add, yeah. Very good. I've not listened to Balde, but I just uh, listened to Pai. He made a very good analysis there, you know. And I think these are some of the things that we need to consider. You know, Chinese are not bad people. Them. They are very hardworking people. Uh, we need to um, tap from their knowledge and their expertise on, you know, IT and all the capacity buildings that you know they offer. You know, those are the areas yeah. that we need to look into. Yeah. You know, yeah, I agree. Um, but our African, yeah, our African, um, you know, countries thinks Chinese are, you know, they don't take them, you know, very seriously. What I mean is like when they're looking money from Chinese. They think they can easily fool Chinese to get money from them because the Chinese are not are not like IMF or World Bank where there are some um, strings attached to you know getting loans from them. You know Chinese don't mind, and I mean they can give you a lot of money. 
but they definitely know what they want from you because wherever they are operating there are resources that they are looking after those countries and that's why they are able to give you um like um, millions of you know dollars because they know you're not going to be able to pay them they know that but they can what they can do is they can utilize your resources and that's what they've been robbing uh, many african countries you know like the same goes um there is no free lunch you know there is no free lunch yeah but china they say is that. struggling mm -hmm. like africa yeah <laughs> china is struggling like africans are struggling i mean they are also i mean a country with a huge population and they have their right. own challenges so if you see a country of that um is is giving out a lot of loans you know to poor countries like africa i mean definitely they are after something you know chinese will give you um 200 dollars in one hand but they take out um three times more than they give you on with the other hand and that's what our people don't realize and just like power was just saying they are after our resources looking at the gambia um in 2017 because when jame was in power jame has actually um cut ties with china they were just dealing with Ta taiwanese you know and then when we have this new administration in 2017 i personally remember i personally wrote to um the former minister of uh, foreign affairs which was double by then i say it was good to open diplomatic ties with china but we have to be very careful with with them coming after our resources and i think this is very important and i think after a few months right. after that we had them china said they are giving us fifty thousand um uh, 50 million dollars is uh, 50 million dollars you know to build the international conference center but before the conference center starts you know china was actually involved in illegal logging in in gambia and, and in senegal and because gambia and senegal has closed their borders to um you know um exports of timber right. and what they are doing is they are they, they are operating in senegal but they use the gambia because the gambia was still you know exporting timber so they will go to senegal rob their resources cross our borders you know and then put this um, locks in the container and they send it to china and they were using our government for that matter and they were using our our, our unscrupulous uh, business people in the gambia and then we all had it from the jana commission uh, between 2014 and 2016 11 000 containers of timber left the gambia yes so china, i had that yeah yeah wow 11 000, 11, 000. 11 000 containers wow. and then german knows very well that that was a lucrative business and then he knew very well that those people who were engaged in the trade are getting a lot of money and then the president end up hijacking the whole trade and then he was working with a westwood um, um company that was exporting the timber and they were charging for handling fee three thousand dollars per container for and so in uh, from that two years alone they collected over thirty three thousand dollars or thirty three million uh, dollars whatever you know in terms of just handling fee so you can imagine how much um of our forest cover has been destroyed um in that illegal trade okay yeah. and then during that time too they allowed these fish mill companies to operate in in the gambia and we all know gambia we're just a poor uh, country our uh, this pelagic fishery resources which are the bongo fish the yai boys and the morocco um these are the the, the, the pelagic fisheries that our local people depend on you know for their livelihood you know yeah. so i mean now the chinese are actually now competing with our local fishermen because they can buy in bulk from them and then use it for their fish meal production. Now the local fishermen are now reluctant, you know, to sell that bunga fish to our, our women engaged in petty business because the women only buy maybe, you know, a couple of, you know, you know, um, bowls wow. from them, you know, very few, not, not, they cannot buy in quantity. But now those fishermen are now bypassing our women who are now engaged in dry fish and smoke fish, you know, um, you know, selling. I mean, they are struggling now to get fishermen from uh, fish from this local fishermen, right? Wow. And they're now giving these Chinese, they're selling out of them. And just like Pao was saying, I was working in the Environmental Protection Agency in the Gambia. When mm. you are establishing a project of that magnitude in the Gambia, you have to go through an environmental impact assessment. You have to identify what that project is going to have an impact on our environment. All of those have to be clearly stipulated out. And then clearly that company, they have all filled our environmental standard. They have filed their, they have filled our environmental violations. Yep. They did not go through the proper procedures. 
And this is why we're having serious environmental challenges in Combo South today, because those Chinese are not actually treating their wastewater. They are just directly, you know, um, you know, discharging this water into our river body, our water body, the mangrove ecosystem close in the in the in the lagoons. So now our, our wetlands are polluted at a very alarming rate. And then, you know, there is a foul smell coming from this um, factory. Uh, people wow. in Gunjur yeah. and the surrounding, the ecologists, the tourists that are utilizing those areas. Now the places are not even safe enough. The tourists are even scared to swim in the ozone in Gunjur areas now. So now the tourists are actually running away from the Gambia because we failed to do our proper environmental um, assessment to ensure that these factories are actually going through. But the good thing is when the reports started coming out that this factory is violating our environmental laws, the National Environment Agency has actually taken step. They have dragged that company on four counts of environmental violation. They dragged the company to court. But while the court procedure was going on, our own government intervened and obstruct justice, you know, and then asked these people to go and the, um, uh, to settle the matter out of court. So you see how the government do. So this can tell you that some of these companies that are operating in our government are having support from our own, our government institutions in the government. They are backing them. Wow. Because there is no way that a company can violate that um, violation. And then uh, the institution that is mandated to regulate, to regulate environmental issues in the country, they right. drag those companies to court. And then our own government, through the, uh, the, 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 the director of press, at the state house coming out playing and making such an announcement that um that that the the, the 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 court case between the national environment agency and the chinese will be settled out of court why would they settle out of court no so they are just obstruction justice so yeah. that means that obviously the accusation that we were hearing that the, yeah. the, the 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 current vice president who was the minister of trade then was behind this chinese company you know wow so wow. all this all this is going on i mean this these people still over three years we've been crying out they're saying that this government this company is violating why are you doing that they are violating our coastal communities whose livelihoods are depending on these resources you know my mother was selling dry fish in brufoot you know that's how some of us get educated yep. so i can tell you that without um you know wow. my mother going to the fish you know, to sell dry fish, to sell smoke fish in Serekunda, some of us will not probably get educated. And this is why we are so passionate about government regulating this issue, because they are denying poor people their right to livelihood and also looking after putting food on the table for their families wow. in expense of what the Chinese are giving them. So this is not, it's not a big deal. They are violating our environmental laws and they are denying, you know, our people their livelihood and of course, also compromising our health because the, the wastewater they are discharging into our ecosystem is coming to haunt us because majority of the people in the coastal areas, we, we, we depend on the groundwater to drink from the wells. So if these Chinese are by, um, discharging wastewaters on the ground, I mean, it's going to pollute our groundwater. And at the end of the day, you know, our people will start drinking from those waters and start getting sick. And we don't know where the sickness is coming from. So I think the government needs to do that. And then we try to engage them several times. We try to tell them, they would tell, okay, this contract was signed since Jamie's um, administration, so we cannot do anything about it. Who told you you cannot do anything about it if you sign a contract with a foreign investor and that foreign investor is violating all your environmental um, laws, yeah. including the international conventions and agreements that the Gambia is party to. Because Gambia is a party to, you know, um, you know, Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. The Gambia is a party to uh, Abidjan Convention, which is regarding um, protection of our marine and coastal environment. So they are violating all these laws, you see. So there is a lot of politics into this, and our government has a hand why these Chinese are continuing doing that. And then also the majority leader of the National Assembly, you know, is a resident of Gunjur. He has the power, he is in an ideal position to engage the Minister of Fisheries and Minister of Environment, drag them to National Assembly, and then bring them to justice, hold them accountable. Why a certain incident is happening in his own community? So he chipping quite also, there is also an allegation that when he was campaigning for a National Assembly seat, this the same company 
you know, funded his campaign. So this is why he's also silly, um, silence over this whole issue. You know, a majority leader of a national assembly. Wow. If, if the government could not do anything, he has that power to bring the minister of fisheries and minister of environment to come and answer to the national assembly why that pollution is going on in, in his backyard. So you see, there is some, those internal politics all gone now. The Chinese are going into the community now, bribing the Alcalos and the VDCs so that they can chip quiet and then go against their own sons and daughters who are against the oppression of these Chinese companies in their own locality. So who do you trust now? Your government cannot defend you. Your National Assembly a member cannot defend you in your own community where we all facing that serious challenge of inhaling very bad odor from this company, yet nobody can do anything about it. So those are some yep. of the challenges we are facing right now, you know? And then wow. finally, look at that international conference center they built. This was a state forest park for that matter, a legally gazetted state forest park. They have bulldozed seven hectares of that forest park without going through environmental impact assessment. They have destroyed the forest. Now the monkeys are roaming all over the place, jumping into the hotel fences, looking for leftover foods because they don't what? have any more food now. <laughs> you see? This is oh, not the monkeys are, are all over. So there is this um, disease transmission that can even happen in the Gambia between the humans and the primates because we are very close to the primates. Whatever disease that the human beings have, you can easily pass it over to the primates and vice versa, you know? So all of this have not been put into consideration. Now our forest is destroyed. A, a $15 million conference center has been erected without proper you know, um, you know, um, mitigation measures. You know? So these are some of the things. So you wonder how government of the Gambia um, is serious about environmental challenges. You know? And yet we go to on international conventions and agreements. We go and attend international COP meetings like climate change, biodiversity conventions, and also desertification. And we'll be making a very good speech there, and they will be saying the Gambia is doing this and this, but yet we don't follow international you know, standards, yeah. even our national level. Yeah. So this is very serious. And then IOC being the second largest intergovernmental body, apart from the United Nations, funding uh, coming to host a conference in the Gambia. In fact, we can even challenge IOC for that. And then they will be held responsible for, you know, um, siding with the government of the Gambia for failing international, um, you know, guidelines. You know, the UN can hold IOC for that because the Gambia is a party to the United Nations um, Framework Convention on Climate Change. So if we push this issue through the UN Convention and say the Gambia is working with the IOC and that they have destroyed our forest, which is a state forest park, legally gazetted and managed by the Department of Forestry. That could be a big issue. Wow. And then if the government did not do anything, we are going to organize an, uh, um, um, a, 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 a demonstration in 2022 before that conference will be held so that you know those monkeys are catered for and then uh, Bijilo Forest Park is actually you know, taken care of properly because the park doesn't even have a very good toilet and they don't even have a good information um, center. And then that park is very significant because the red colobus monkey is a very threatened species. Only 1,500 of them is surviving in the entire world today. And the Gambia is lucky to be one of those countries with the population of red colobus monkey in the whole world today. Yeah. So you yeah. see, and wow. then we have so many international research students that are coming from um, the UK and America to come and do um, research in, in, in Bidula Forest Park, you know? And then they, 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 they're trying to do research to find out our endangered and the threatened species. Now, if you look at the climate change too, with all these disasters happening in the Gambia, the wind storms, you know, and all this flooding going on in the Gambia, Bidula Forest Park is actually blocking the community of um, um, Kerseri and Bidula from all these wind storms that comes over during the rainy season. So when you destroy that forest park, you are actually opening, you are exposing those communities to the um, natural disasters. And then the where also the center is located, also um, according to our National Environment Management Act, you cannot build a permanent structure within 150 meters from the high water mark because we are now encouraging coastal erosion. Recently, the Gambia 
in, uh, has spent over 20 million US dollars trying to protect Banjul, Senegambia areas and the Radio Sea. And then now Senegambia is totally in a mess. Now we have to benefit from another project again, which is over 8 million US dollars trying to protect Senegambia and Caraba Beach Hotel. So wow. having those infrastructures along the coastline, we are actually um, encouraging coastal erosion in the Gambia. And then it is going to have an impact on our economy and on the tourism, which the Gambia depends on so much because 70 percent of the tourists that comes to the gambia are eco tourists these are the people who wants to come and see our nature they want to see our beautiful wildlife they want to see our culture they right. go down into our eco lodges and then spend money there they hire our taxi drivers and our bad watchers who spend money from them go on up river you know to go and see our hippopotamus so if we don't have anything to show in the gambia then our tourism is going to be hugely affected yep, and then yep. there will be job losses in the gambia our hotels will be closed. Restaurants will not be opening anymore. You know? So these are some of the challenges we are facing um, in, in our country. So um, um, I, I thank you so much. I don't have much time. I'm at work right now. So I just decided to take a break just to join you because I missed your uh, your program for the past couple of uh, times or so. Um, yeah. It's always not a good time, but I can always do my lunch time within the, uh, the program time and you know, contribute to what I say. But this is what I want to say about Chinese investment in our country. I think the government need to um, they need to step up. Ban. They need to step up. Yeah. I'm telling yeah, you, man. Need, it's from the top. It needs to come from the top. Yeah. Especially so, timber trade that needs to be completely banned now. Banned because we don't trade. have that forest anymore in the yeah, Gambia. Yeah. And yeah. then with the with the bonga fish also rising up, the prices of bonga fish is rising up because in Gunjur alone, these people are producing um um 20 containers every week each container um contains about 40 bucks of 50 kilogram back each container is 40 bucks so 40 times 20 that's about 8000 bucks their weekly production so imagine one five kilograms of bonga fish is one kilogram of fish meal so imagine how many kilograms of uh, how many tons of bonga fish are they filling one container which is 40 bucks for 40, 40 bucks or 400 bucks, sorry. 40 bucks, sorry. So you can see they are, they are over, <coughs> over exploiting our pelagic oh. resources, which our poor people depend on for our livelihood. So there is no way this company's operation is sustainable at all. And we need to make a stop to it and they review all the fishing license that we have because we don't even know how many boats have been um, granted permission to, 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 to fish in our waters. We don't know. You know, and then the Gambia is one of those countries with a very low minimal fee, you know, for, um, for boats um, coming into our, 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 our waters to fish. So these are some of the things we need to look at. And it's not, if we can control this, our fisheries alone is worth over 350 million annually. Wow. If we can control our fisheries, it's enough to feed the Gambia and, our, and it will contribute towards our health sector. It will go towards our, our education sector. We are losing so much money in our, in our fishery sector. So it needs to be controlled. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that Thank insight. You so much. Um, Very good insight. I think, I think you guys, are, our viewers definitely are really, really getting something out of this show today. Um, so just to tell you one thing that I observe, um, the reason why uh, Chinese, our governments are allowing Chinese investors coming there. I heard from, you know, and this, are, this is from, you know, a source that I truly believe understands the way the Chinese people operate. The Chinese, they give um, kickbacks. They call it kickbacks. Yeah. More than anyone, any other company, I mean, or many, any other investors in the West. <clears throat> so what they do, and their kickbacks comes in a cargo, okay? They will tell you they don't mind to give you, um, you know, you, you having them a contract, let's say a road construction, a bridge construction, uh, and then they send in a container, maybe uh, two million, two million of your currency. So where, which is not accounted for, is not going to any direct deposit or something like that. They can yeah. make it in a way that is invisible. So they allow corruption. They Absolutely. allow Chinese Chinese people are uh, they they tap into the to our African mind of corrupting our leaders, so that mm -hmm. they can get these contracts, they can get their agenda across without having to go through the right channel. 
So this is what you know, other nation, countries like America and other places are not doing. That's why Chinese people are getting more footing. And before, if you realize, before Chinese used to go through the West, Western countries to tap into Africa, but now they say, listen, yeah, we are smart enough to even go there and do, get it, uh, the resources ourselves. We don't have to go through you. We don't have to go through US. We don't have to go to other countries to do that. Let's go and build up our economy through directly um, going to Africa and then tapping into them by corrupting their leaders, by giving them loans, by giving them something that they will not be able to pay. And what happens if you don't pay these loans? The, the contract, what, what is binding in the contracts is that if you don't pay it, then we're going to owe, you know, a portion of, you know, your, 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 what, you, what you had. So this is why in places like Sri Lanka and other places that, you know, Chinese people invested, they end up taking, you know, a portion of their resources. I think there's another, uh, Ethiopia also is a victim also, uh, a country that has never no, been colonized. No, no. Mm -hmm. no Yes. That magnificent building housed, um, accommodating the African Union was built by the Chinese. That is yeah. why, yeah, yeah, that is why um, if Pamela is coming up with this uh, expose, you know, it's interesting. And it, for me, it's music to my ears because it's like, like Pamela um, explained, the Gambia has environmental impact assessment. Um, I remember numerous times I covered this um, NEA, I follow um, catch up with them, you know, on uh, trying to find out, you know, they have very brilliant experts, you know, I mean, there are people mm -hmm. who, knows, who are all favorite with the issues. But the reality on the ground is, is one thing to have an expert working in a ministry or a department, but then, you know, retribution in the civil service. You know, obviously, if the Secretary General or, for instance, a senior government official yeah. wants something done, you the expert, even if you have your PhD or three PhDs, you know, with you and you know the implications of doing certain things, you you are you are, you are bound to, to 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 fall within the ambit of the law, or you either take the directive, you know, from the executive, or you go home. Somebody else is going to take that position. So the to say that they have infiltrated our continent is an understatement. The fact of the matter is the AU building itself in Ethiopia, which is our headquarters of the African Union, where the African leaders sit, they are tied. So to really um, condemn the Chinese to an extent, you know, about the realities of the ground, and this is all over the continent. I have a colleague of mine um, who is a Nigerian here. I mean, he, tell, he told me about a story about this uh, COVID-19, that there was a Chinese factory. I forgot the state where these people are, op uh, are operating. They held these workers in Nigeria to ransom and refused to let them go home. They said, no, they can work in the factory, you know, without paying them. And they were working, making them work 24-7. <laughs> so when you talk about the Chinese problem in Gambia, you think we don't know the Gambia. This is a sad reality. If you are talking, yeah, it's really despicable mm. on the continent. They have infiltrated the continent to an extent that they have made of slaves, even the West. We uh, condemn for saying, you know, preaching, telling us about democracy or telling us what to do. Now the Chinese have overtaken that to an extent that they have enslaved us. And to sit down here and even talk about it is even an understatement. So this guy said to me that uh, the Chinese decided to put those laborers, to hold, held them hostage. And then in the end, what those laborers did, because they were tired, they couldn't even go home, their families couldn't, you know, catch up with them. They ended, wow. up burning, they ended up burning that factory. They burned the factory. They set it, they set it ablaze. And then people started coming and then, you know, they started, be, look, look at it, in Nigeria, of all places. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is like a big, Nigeria and South Africa are like big brothers to us in terms of economy, in terms of, you know, I mean, if Nigeria really put, set, put its house in order, Africa, you know, will be, you know, competing even the US. But, I mean, look at it. So the Chinese really, um, like I said earlier, I would repeat, um, maybe Farmer made that point was that when they give free, that's not really like free lunch. When mm -hmm. they come to our countries, you know, they make sure that they look for the lucrative area. Look at Gunyur, that's Combo South. Look at mm -hmm. how, how fertile or um, interesting, you know, that mm -hmm. area is in terms yeah. of investment. You think when they come to a country, they go to, you know, um, areas that are not important. No, they go for the heart. They mm -hmm. go for areas that are very, very important and are strategic. And then they make sure that once they, because the thing is, they have the money to spend. They know Africa is vulnerable. They know we are poor. 
and they know corruption is virtually irresistible. You know, it's so lucrative that um, you can t you can you, you can hardly give uh, you know um, uh, to turn away when they come with their package. I mean, it's so healthy. It's not it's not like it is good. So you, know, you think about it, and like you uh, from, uh, like you, someone has said, when they are given money, they don't go to the deposit or through bank or check. No, they have their covered means of of making so that the money passed through you know the intended target. So how can we overcome these challenges or these problems that China has really um, come hard on us? It's going to be difficult. It's going to be, it's going to be very impossible, in fact, to undo. Because the reality is um, our governments from the AU, I'm telling you, I mean, is where the African leaders sit every time they have emergency summit and they're like, you know, it was built by the Chinese. So they have really taken a strong firm grip on the continent right yep. yeah that's um, a, um so um before sam you come in one second um i just want people to understand do, do ask yourself why are chinese coming to africa first china is overpopulated china has about two billion people guess what they are trying to get those people to be somewhere some people are living in the sea I had they even plan to build some some st stuff on the sky, some railways and some uh, uh, some some railways and then um, you know subway uh, you know in this on on the, on and in the sky <laughs> that whereby well, so they it. they have no other means of um, they are congested so they try to utilize the you know uh, above uh, uh, you know surface the space space so to to so commute. So yeah. Sorry. Sorry to interject, but I don't agree with your point that China's coming to Africa is because they don't have a place to live. Look, after China is India. I was in India in 2009. Mm. India is 1.6 billion. Is India, not, is India not also interested in trying to find new grounds? No. China's coming to Africa is, is, is strategy. That is investment, period. Yes, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. But why, they, 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 I'm coming to that. But... um. I, I, I understand your point. Um, it is definitely not only overpopulation, but China is trying to um, uh, exploit Africa. They want to keep the labor profit. You see, if they can come to Africa and employ Africans to a lower cost, to keep most, most of the money, they will do that because they are doing it in China. They are doing it in other countries. They're also giving Africans loans to, so that they can, those people can default in their loans and then also take over their properties because it's all highlighted in their contracts they also want africans to be depending on them so intellectually educationally and so forth so because if you depend on them then what's going to happen is that somebody you depend on usually controls you and lastly they want to also make a, a a police and a military base in africa so that when africans stop you know couldn't pay these loans you know what's going to happen? There might be a conflict, and then you know what's going to happen? There are military and police, I mean, their police are there. There might be a fight breakup, and the military will come and take over. And that's how you occupy a country. So China, China has a strategic, a strategic, you know, like a, a, a plan to exploit our country. So this is the high time for us to say no to the loans. Why not look into what the Chinese are doing? Let's do it. Let's say a simple mask. Let's, why can't we have our government give thousands of dollars to our local tellers to design us a mask instead of ordering from China? Mm -hmm. the, the World Bank gave uh, you know, Gambia how much money? Mm -hmm. I was talking to the, um, uh, to the, to, to the, health, to the health ministry the other day. There we are buying, the World Bank is buying those masks from China in, 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 in collaboration with the Gambian, you know, the, the money that the Gambian government is assigning to. Some of these things can be made in Gambia. Mm -hmm. So we need to be creative than de be dependent. Because once Africans don't start looking into creativity and innovation and investing in, you know, I mean, technologies that works, that provides, not like you go theoretically, you go to school and have all these degrees and you cannot make anything. You cannot even make a thread out of it. 
we need to go beyond that now we need to be you know you know industrially you know equipped people are you know i've seen somebody you know making a plane out of a stick one time you have young people coming up with all these dreams but there is no there is no allocation of fund there is no you know kind of a mind driven um, um desire for us to exploit our natural talent so this is what is suffocating us somebody come and give you a loan i don't need it why do we need a bridge from bara to banjur if we can invest on what we have to contain ourselves because let me tell you if you are in debt that's why they create a credit card just to hook up the white black folk i don't want to be racial here but us who are not looking at the financial aspect of things once you owe you are enslaved to that thing financially or economically mm -hmm. but our people okay. are not using our minds absolutely so this is what we need to teach this is what our leaders need to know this hefty money saying that you know we, oh you have chinese give you a window to be default they give you a loan that you know is not realistic these are not realistic things how can somebody give you so much money that you cannot even believe on but you know our people are like they are living for today our leaders are living for today what we can put in our pocket how much tall building we can build in senegal or in other areas and they are not looking at the consequence the, the, that this need to, need to be to be paid if you live in the us here you have your credit card it goes into a credit report even medical bill if you don't pay it, it goes into a credit report right, guess what when you want to you know be in, in, an investor you cannot do it so these things have repercussions but now is the time that our people need to know cut your clothes according to your size listen we used to live in the days in back home we don't have all this development we, we are living happy we were happier then than, than now so use what you have if i have to advise any government this is what i would tell them use the resources we have we have a lot of resources like you said you know this timber exploitation and all that are all done why because they are giving back um, they are giving kickbacks to people and those people are allowing them there's no barely no forest in the gambia now i i, I was there last year i traveled from farafeni going to uh to Suare, Badibu Suare Kunda, my home village I barely could see a forest. There's no barely a tree. Three, one tree here, another tree, like for how many kilometers? Why? Everything has been gone. No, there's no replacement of, of our natural resources. And then what, what do we end up? We don't have any rain. And we started collecting, yeah, this, this year, Tio Mansoro, Mukatio Senano, and nobody become even a farmer anymore. Everybody, you know, is, you know, exodus into, into combos. Everybody exodus into, 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 into Europe or in America and every place. Now, the coronavirus hit us. Nowhere to go. What we're thinking of, huh? most of the people I talk, talk to, I'm thinking about going back home now because I cannot live in this life now. The West that we are embracing now, they cannot solve problems that they, they, uh, is out of hand. So where well, I have to go back and I, I, I hide in the forest by buy some 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 places in Busumbala where I can I can sit there that way I don't even have to deal with none of these chemicals or something. So the world is oh, becoming crazy. Out. Now is the time that we know back home is essential. And you know what? These people are investing there. I've seen African Americans investing buying homes if we don't know it in the combo areas and other places. And by the time we know it, we don't have any land. So our government need to really look at, you know, territorial, you know, you know, control to kick this Chinese out, our fishery, fishery to kick them out, so they we can have the right fishes to eat, we can have the right, you know, things for all people, and then let's develop from there. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Sam. So. Yeah, you know, in, in a nutshell, you know, yeah. just like I started, you know, it all starts from the leadership. It's very important that the leadership knows what they are doing and uh, the leadership uh, really take control of this. And, uh, you know, just like I said, it's, it's, it's very important for them to try to balance their budget. Part of the reason I said that is because you shouldn't be taking loans that you cannot pay. Okay, don't take loans and let your grandchildren pay that loan. 
take loans that you know you can budget and try to pay out of it within the five year period that you're in. You know, if we stick with that and, 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 and create very tough laws for these investors in our country, I think not only we will put them in control, but also we have term limits. And, and at the same time, the ones that are in violation, we're gonna collect a lot of money from them because we're gonna find them and, and shut them down until they pay that fine. And at the end of that contract, we terminate the contract and say, we're no longer interested in this contract, period. Let them leave. This is how we need to do it. Um, you know, there's enough been said about this. I don't wanna drag on too much, but it all starts from the top, just like I said, leadership. We need to have the right people in place. And if we don't have them, next election, we vote for another people until we get the right people in place, something like that. But in you know, otherwise, Chinese, we cannot let Chinese take over Gambia. We can't. Yeah, definitely. So go well, ahead. Well, well, yeah. You have any? Um, by the way, um, just shortly, um, I know coronavirus um is really an issue that we are really facing. So I just wanna you know, just wanna ask this question. Um, the Gambian government, mm -hmm. right? They say that. They are monitoring the developments. They say that they are they they are practicing right the precautions, but there's no social distancing in the Gambia. As I, as people that I spoke to, there's no social distancing in the Gambia. They 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 getting money funding, right, for yep. this coronavirus. They wear a mask. They are officials when I see them in the meeting. But some of some of the masks that they even wear is not even covering, every, every, you know, all, all their faces as required even. But again, this cannot be taken as a joke. So people are dying in the Gambia. They are not be, autopsy, uh, autopsy hasn't been performed on them. We don't know the cause of their death. There is no massive testing. Somebody told me they're gonna start testing very soon, publicly, like everybody. So I don't know how true that is, but um, what we want, oh, go ahead, Bella. Yeah, well, I'm sorry for cutting you short. Um, well, I was just on Facebook just about, I think an hour ago, um, I saw Papanjai, uh, the PVP um, leader, or Secretary General, um, uh, I mean, being tested at Bakao Primary School. So um, testing, they're making it now mandatory. Well, not mandatory, I think, I mean, kind of voluntary um, for the okay. time being. Okay, because, that's a good news. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, people are tested, but it's not mandatory actually. It's just voluntary for the time being. Uh, people because that, you know, the thing is one thing about us Africans or generally um, Gambia is people are naive when it comes to certain things. Ah, this is propaganda. You know, I don't think it's you know uh, it's true that this COVID nineteen is a problem. So un unfortunately. Unless people see that there are deaths, some will not take it seriously. And that's serious. Because when we get to that level, look at New York. By first March, this virus penetrated upstate. First March, people business was usual. But look at it from the first March to the first week of March to the second week, week it became so serious that people couldn't even recognize the city that is so-called called the big apple or the city that never sleep the city went to bed so um as a matter of fact people normally take things you know with a with, with, you know with a pinch of salt when it comes to the COVID 19. so for gambia to say that we don't have to believe in it until um we see or witness that that that's serious because it's a small country so the voluntary test, um, uh, testing is, is a source of concern, which is good, but God forbid, when we get to the other level, with government, I was following the news that they are trying to um, get a treatment center, I think in Bacau. Um, then um, the other issue also is about ventilators. Yes, um, these are all issues that they need to put in place. For me, my, my concern right now, Sawane, to be honest with you, is about the sensitization. So far, yes, on TV, we see sports announcement about um, social distancing. But I don't know but how these messages are not sinking quite well 
I don't know why the, I just the, missed the, the, it's because of the illiteracy level or what? No, I think um, the yardstick or, or the media or is, the, or is the religious factor? No, I don't think it's the religious factor. I think it's about the outreach. How many people in uh, Kunda Janea, for instance, your, your community have yeah. access to TV? Suarekunda. Suarekunda. How many people have access to TV there, for instance? Go uh, to not, Kauru. not many, not many. Go to Kauru, you know, Kauru, Jane Kuna, or Dane Mayo, and they like, count the number of people who have access to TV or internet, like you and I. Pass pa pa city, pass city, yeah. uh, not, yeah. not yeah. many. Not very many. Then go to my community in Fulabantan and East Satellite Villages. How many people have access to what you call Zoom? Tell them about Zoom. They'll tell you they don't understand that. Right, so you will see that do, uh, most of the facilities being enjoyed in rural areas are extension workers or people who are sent there as government agents, agri workers, who <laughs> because they have yep. families in Gombos, you know, they will come with this thing to, at least to, to do, to play catch up with what is happening. But rural people themselves do not have access to this thing because the internet, you know, mobile facilities, when you need GSM <coughs> network, sometimes you climb trees. Sometimes you go to taller buildings so that you can have access to certain, you know, um, network, either AfriCell, QCell, or Comio. So if you are telling me that you challenge uh, your advertisement, all your advertisements are on um, on TV, spot announcement about social distancing. Yes, it's true. This is for the combo or the banjul elites. But for the rural people, I don't think they have, they know um, this advertisement, the important, uh, the value that we attach to them. So I think that's the missing link in my perception because the people that I talk to, sometimes uh, the challenges they face with regard to understanding the dynamics of what is happening in the combo is a problem because most of those who are in denial, I, you know, uh, I, 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 I stand to be corrected, are those who are in rural areas. So uh, for me, I think the problem is that because they are not getting the information. <clears throat> We, our assumption is that someone can say, no, I mean, we, we, don't you see this announcement on, on TV or WhatsApp messages? You and I enjoy the privilege of being on WhatsApp, but the rural people, most of them don't have access to, 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 um, to smartphones. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then for radio announcement, yes, uh, radio play a key role, but what is important for me, I think the announcement, there should be more engaging outreach programs targeting communities, especially yeah, far from communities that do not have access to radio, TV, or smartphones. You go to them and tell them, maybe show videos, even if it's going to be um, brief sessions with them, illustrate, you know, show the video or, you know, about countries that are ravaged by this COVID-19. But not only to assume that the announcement on radio or TV do stick with the people. Yep. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, let's wrap it up um, because uh, hey, I'm going to have know, to leave yeah, now yeah, because yeah, I, definitely. I need to jump on the other one here. Yeah. But uh, I just want to thank you. I don't know that I can say much now because there's only a few, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just wrap it up. Wrap it up um, yeah, and then yeah. we can just so, wrap it up. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but I want to thank you both uh, very much for taking this time. And you've said quite a bit here today. And um, like COVID-19 is something that we can bring back another time because it's here. To, it's here. I won't say here to stay, but here for now. And uh, so we yeah, really have a lot to talk about, <laughs> about that. You know, it's, it's not going anywhere yet. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's dwindling down, but um, there's more to say about it. Maybe another time we can bring it up again another time. But uh, definitely. Um, but I, agree. Um, I just want to thank you both because I, I'm, I'm running out of time now. So uh, yeah. thank, thank you, you so much. For the time. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, um, so again, we're going to catch up um, in two weeks and then yes. we're going to have uh, a weekly yeah. program starting from um, May 17. So okay. guys, you know, watch out uh, our weekly programs, New Gambia Platform. We're going to be giving you updates on not only, you know, political but social issues. And then we're going to be brief and coincide about it. And then we're going to have to get some calls from our participants as well. We're going to have highly, you know, like, uh, you know, responsible folks uh you know undertaking certain areas and departments coming up here and discussing with us so thank you guys thank you yeah thank you mr balde catch you yeah